Hello everybody, how you doing today? This is Deacon Sakon, the Prince of the Liberty Mission at Baptist Church, or the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. And today we're going to be reviewing the Sunday School lesson coming out of Faith Pathways book. But as always, let's start in a word of prayer. Tell God our Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for another day and another opportunity to be alive. Thank you, Lord God, for all the many blessings you've given us and for everything that you've done on our behalf. How you keep watching over us day in and day out. Now, Lord God, we actually will be with us as we go through this lesson. God, give us wisdom, insight, and give us understanding. God, speak to us through your word that we may be better sons and better daughters, better servants of you. And we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, it is Christmas Eve, and Merry Christmas to everybody. And we're going to be uh, discussing... Like lesson number four, and the date is December the 24th, 2023, and uh, the, we're in unit one, and the unit subject is Profiles in Faith. The lesson subject is Sharing Hope and Courage. The devotional reading comes from like, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. The background script is Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 25, verses 39 through 45, verses 56 through 60. The printed passage is Luke chapter 1, verses 36 through 45, and verse 26. I mean, verse 56. Our key verse states, It came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and spake out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit, is the fruit of thy womb. Luke chapter 1, verses 41 through 42. The lesson I am state that as a result of experience this lesson, you should be able to do the following. Make connections between the life of two women, Elizabeth and Mary, who face extraordinary circumstances in God's grand salvation scheme. Emphasize or empathize with Mary's desire to visit with Elizabeth and participate in Christian community to bolster your faith. Amen. <clears throat> the introduction says, the past three year period unfolded with tremendous challenges. The onslaught of a global pandemic brought waves of death, serious illness, isolation, economic distress to millions worldwide. Added to that was the escalation of overt acts of violence against minority groups politicians put putting position and prestige above concerns of people, continuing systematic racism and discrimination and social injustice. The faith community has not been immune to the impact of these developments. Some congregations closed their doors due to failing attendance and financial and financial fact necessity. Church membership have declined through death and defections. The comfort of homes has overtaken many people's desire to, co to commitment to assembly in the sanctuary. Through it all, many once faithful church leaders have abandoned their position. If there was ever a period when God's people needed someone to share their joys and struggles, it is now. God's words call us to encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of us be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. First, fact Thessalonians 5 and 11 reads, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact ye are doing. God has called each of us to the much needed ministry of encouragement because it is necessary for our walk of faith. How can, in fact, believers build a higher capacity for encouraging each other during this season of discouragement? In fact, they can begin by taking Paul's advice to learn how to be content and by shifting their minds to focus on those things that are true, noble, right, pure, admirable, praiseworthy, or excellent while encouraging others to do likewise. Additionally, Christians 
fact, must be more spiritual, must be more spiritually discerning to recognize when others need encouragement. Finally, every believer can consistently build Christ-like like relationships with others who share their faith in God. Amen. The analysis of the biblical text, the first section says, Divine, divine Assurance, Luke chapter 1, verse 36 to 40. And the word of the Lord reads, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the, ha Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into the city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Amen. But the commentary says, the text opens as Mary, in fact, receives the news that God has chosen her to give birth to a son, Israel promised Messiah. The angel Gabriel then made another startling announcement. Her cousin Elizabeth, though past ch childbearing years, was already six months pregnant. This revelation was further assurance and encouragement concerning her miraculous conception through the Holy Spirit's work. Gabriel's following words was to a to the soon be soon to be mother of Jesus, were meant to comfort comfort her further. For for with God nothing shall be impossible. Elizabeth, in fact, miraculous pregnancy, in fact, was proof that what God willed for her life would come to pass. His simple phrase speaks volumes of hope that results from having faith in God. Anything that can be done in fact, within his power, anything can be done within his power and ability. In fact, the believer's task is to follow Mary's faithful response, her trusting s s submission. It should be evident that Mary understood the implications of the social stigma attached to an unwanted pregnant, pregnant woman in her culture then. She expressed complete obedience by ad identifying herself as the Lord's handmaid or slave girl. She, she reinforced that this was all by acknowledging that she wholeheartedly accepted his will, in fact, whatever the outcome. After the angel <laughs> departed, encouraged by his words, Mary excitedly and hurriedly left for a cousin's house in the hill country of Judea. Mary's response suggests that she had established a relationship with God before Gabriel's vision and announcement. Her subsequent action demonstrated at least three essentials and, and applicable principles. Confidence in his word, a willingness to submit to his will for her life, and desire in fact, to share her joy for being chosen to participate in his plan of salvation. Mary was anxious to share her joy about his coming and her role in it. Now that Jesus has come, that we should excitedly share the good news that he is available to all who accept him by faith. Especially during the Advent season, that we should encourage those who believed, who continue persevering by faith. Amen. So here we're talking about divine assurance. And I know we come in, or we came in on the middle of the story, which really kind of puts us at somewhat of a disadvantage because everything that led up to it. But of course, if you read the scriptures, you already know the conversation that Mary had with Gabriel and how she's talked to him, saying, like, like, how can this be seen that I know not a man? And we oftentimes try to forget how young she was. I mean, she was a teenager, but she was old enough to know what it took to get pregnant and what it took to have a child. But she was also firm enough in her belief of, uh, 
of, of God and who he was and his plan of salvation to where she submitted herself to that. And <clears throat> another cause for assurance was, again, Elizabeth. I mean, being well past childbearing years, but being pregnant. And of course, Mary, we know she wanted to go and see. In fact, not that she was moving in doubt, but she wanted that assurance. And knowing that Mary, that Elizabeth was pregnant, in, even when she was old, in fact, when it seemed like it was, it was when it, when it wasn't possible for her to actually have a child, but yet God allowed her and Zacharias to actually, in fact, conceive. That further attested to the fact that God could do anything, and so God gave her that divine assurance of knowing that He was going to do what He said He was going to do. And even like the commentary says, she had a relationship with God before all of this stuff went down. She she knew God in a, in a more personal way. So even when a even when Gabriel came to her, you know she didn't immediately bolt or just in fact reject everything that was said. You know she didn't run scared, but she had a relationship with God. She knew God enough to when He talked to her, she knew it was Him. But she was also human enough, in fact, to ask questions. I think sometimes we, God knows exactly who we are, how we respond, how we act, everything about us. And God knows what it's going to take to get us from point A to point B. And when it's within his divine plan, there are times when God will make concessions for us answer our questions, reassure us, all of those things. And then the other time when God just say do it and just and we have to do it, quite frankly. But God made sure that she understood what was happening. And then to just put the icing on the cake, if you will, her going to see Elizabeth was something that again was impossible for for her, her age. I mean, being six months pregnant, you, you, know, you can't really hide that. I mean, because you're pretty much out there by the end. I mean, in fact, your stomach is showing, everything else is going on. People know that you expect it. And, and Elizabeth was a child, and I talk about the talk of the town, as old as she was, but she was, she was still expecting, expecting a child. And see, that, that just goes to show you how God used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And he's still doing that even today. In fact, the next section says <laughs> divine encouragement. Luke chapter 1, verses 41 through 45, near verse 56. And the word of the Lord reads, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, like the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is it to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as in fact, the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ear, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her of the Lord. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her house. Amen. The commentary says, Mary, Mary's arrived at Elizabeth's home set the stage for additional confirmation and encouragement regarding her in fact, miraculous pregnancy and f future birth of her son, in fact, the Messiah. Her presence and greeting caused an instantaneous reaction by Elizabeth's unborn son and her being filled with the Holy Spirit. His feeling prompted her inspired response to Mary's pregnancy, although Mary had yet to mention it. Twice in verse 42, Elizabeth's loud cry expressed her excitement and carries the idea that Mary is the most, is, is the most honored among all women. In verses 43, Elizabeth, inspired by the Holy Spirit, in fact, referred to Mary's unborn child as her Lord or Master. In this spirit, 
energized joy. Mary celebrated Jesus as her Messiah and Savior. But reminiscent to Gabriel's announcement to Mary and his prediction that Elizabeth that hers would be the Messiah's herald. Luke records Elizabeth's account that the unborn son, John, that responded dramatically to the presence of Mary and the soon coming Jesus by leaping in Elizabeth's womb, another manifestation of the Holy Spirit filling ministry. Finally, Elizabeth spoke a prayer of blessing concerning Mary with a with a particular emphasis on her willingness to believe God's word as true. Elizabeth's prayer affirmed Mary's humble faith. When Mary arrived to, fact, to visit her cousin, Elizabeth was already six months pregnant. Assuming she stayed fact, three months more, Mary fact, would have been present at the birth of Elizabeth's baby, John. In this context, Elizabeth's response and attitude were equally worth emulating. Elizabeth demonstrated obedience to unselfish concerns for someone else. Openness to the Holy Spirit's feeling, confidence, truth in God, unselfish joy for another's blessing, and a willingness to share hope through encouragement. As we participate in the local faith community, let us adopt these women's attitude by nurturing environments where all can find and receive spiritual encouragement, hope, and support. <clears throat> so we see here how even in fact before Mary could say anything, other than greetings or salutations or however they said hello in that day. In fact, before Mary could tell the story of what happened and before Mary could really, really see, I guess, you know, what was going on with Elizabeth. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and you just, and you spoke? Not knowing where they were or what they were doing, uh, you know, um, so I can just imagine Mary speaking as she comes in and her voice is what prompted the Holy Spirit to cause John to leap in Elizabeth's room and the Holy Spirit filled her at that moment. And, and then even before Mary could even address the fact, hey, you're pregnant or hey, you know, this is what God said to me. Even before she could say any of that, she saw Elizabeth's pr pregnancy and she also got a confirmation of what Gabriel had told her. And again, just an amazing opportunity for her faith to be strengthened. And even like the commentary says, you know, she was there for three months. Elizabeth was already six months pregnant, and we know it takes nine months to nine months from conception to birth. And so her staying there probably was to help Elizabeth during that time. But also she went through her own period of morning sickness, her own period of, you know, feeling, in fact, the growing Messiah in, in her womb. In fact, but she also supported other people. There are so many people that will just only want stuff to be about them, and they don't want to look out for somebody else. Although Mary may have been dealing with her own morning sickness, you know, with her own issues of, of, those, of that first trimester, she put herself aside to help Elizabeth, who was in her last trimester. So, understanding that God has called us to ministry, even when we need ministering to ourselves, I believe that is commendable and that is admirable because it's that particular thought process that really helps us to emulate Christ and to represent him and to leave on record that we have a relationship with him, even when we need help, but we're helping other people. When we're bleeding, but God uses us to help bandage someone else up. And I can't tell you how many times he's done that for me. You know, when I was hurting, bleeding, my guts hanging out, spiritually speaking, and God said, go over there and minister to them. But I'm like, God, I'm, I'm the one hurt. I'm bleeding over here. He said, you go over there and you take care of them. 
And what I realized is why he was using me to minister to them, he was ministering to me. He was, he was sewing me up and, and putting me back together again. And that's the attitude that us as believers, we need to have because that's what Christ did. He didn't wait until we got right. He came while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So he had a servant attitude and a servant's mindset. And that's something that we as believers should have even today. So this is an amazing lesson because it reminds us of that simple truth. That sharing hope and encouragement is what's needed even today, even among believers. The closing thought says, this lesson, Unified Principles, invites you to, cons to consider to whom like you might turn when processing a major life event, spiritual or natural. Mary and Elizabeth both turned to God first then to someone who shared a common faith in the Lord. But believers must consistently maintain a relationship with God while building genuine Christian connections with others demonstrated through agape love, unselfish concerns for others' well-being. And I'm telling you, all of us can take a lesson, take a page out of this book for doing that for other people. It's actually that says, your life says, in this context, the angel Gabriel and Elizabeth spoke words that encouraged Mary in her unexpected life-changing experience. God's word commands believers to encourage one another. In fact, you won't have to look far to find someone who needs encouragement, especially during times like these. After prayerfully seeking the Holy Spirit guidance, Identify someone that you can encourage and support spiritually and, practic and practically, in fact, this week and in the weeks to come. That's what we need to do. In fact, we need to make it a point to, that we are pouring into other people and seeking those folks that we can encourage. And I'm telling you, if you do that, God will encourage you in return. The section says, your world, there's an immeasurable value in sharing hope and encouragement. That is, in being a, a spiritual encourager for those facing challenges locally and abroad. For you can meet others' needs for encouragement in multiple ways. Via a smile, a text, an email, a phone call, a visit, or an appropriate gift. For you decide how you can follow Mary and Elizabeth's mutual sharing of joy and concern. Your act of spiritual encouragement and support have the power to touch people deeply in your home and throughout your sphere of influence. And I want to point out the fact that I think oftentimes we overlook that first part about in our home. You know, we'll go and help everybody else, but there are people that are hurting right up under your roof and you hadn't even paid attention to it or noticed it. And I know what I'm talking about. The section that says the closing prayer says, Father, help us to respond to your plans for our lives with with expecting joy and trust in your sovereign will. Then fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can become transmitters of spiritual encouragement to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sharing hope and courage. We all need to make it a point to do just that because, again, you know, we live in a world that, quite frankly, needs encouragement. They need hope. And I know people saying, well, I need hope too. Yes, and we know that you need hope as well. But God's, ten God's intention for us is for us to not just be concerned about ourselves, but be concerned about others. Christ didn't come to save himself, but he came to save us. He's our ultimate example of sacrificial love. He's our ultimate example of s serving other people and not just ourselves. And Mary did that for Elizabeth. She went, and again, she was pregnant. Again, she was dealing with hormonal sickness. Again, you know, she could have stayed and just been all about her, but she went to help somebody else. So if we take anything from this lesson, is that even in the midst of our own challenges, our own struggles, our everything that we could do, want to do, might do, 
we can help other people do the same. So don't allow the situation and circumstances of your life to cause you not to step up, to cause you not to be there for the people that need you. Don't let what is going through or, or happening to you get you so wrapped up in yourself that you can't see the needs of other people. And that's something I believe all of us, we can do a better job at, at looking beyond our own issues and seeing somebody else. And I'm telling you, I, I know people that have done that time and time again, and it's been life changing for me. And it's also gave me an example of how I should do that for other people. So with that being said, let's close in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for another amazing opportunity to be able to study your word. We thank you, Lord God, for this season of the year, this Advent season, where you sent your only begotten Son. Pray next to now, Father God, that our minds, our hearts, our souls are prepared, and we have room in our hearts for him. The men that have been room in the end, but there's room should be in our hearts for him to come in. God, help us today to be the people you're calling for us to be in these last and evil days. God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, create in us a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within us. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, because you said they shall prosper that love thee. We ask right now that you would, God, end the war that's going on in the Middle East. God, we ask you to just have your way on both sides of that situation. And not just that, but everywhere in the world that there's conflict, that there's strife, that there's hard times, God, we ask that you just show up and show out. And I know that you use us to do that. So, God, give us the heart and the mind to be able to, God, to be a blessing to your people, just like Mary was to Elizabeth. Even though we have needs, God, we know that you can meet our needs as we help meet other needs. Father, we just thank you right now for being our help, our protection, our way maker, our strong tower, for being our hope, even during this time. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, okay, this is the Dixie Code of Prayers of the Living and Missionary Baptist Church by the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. I want to thank Pastor May for allowing us this opportunity and this time to be able to actually share these Sunday school lessons with you. I want to thank God for my labor, my co-labor in this endeavor, the Reverend Frederick Robinson. I just appreciate God for you, in fact, Reverend Robinson, and for the stand that you stance that you have for God and for His Word. In fact, to my wife Yolanda, and to all our children, Marcellus, Kristen, Jessica, Noel, and Jonathan. Thank God for each and every one of you, and I thank God for those people who are tuning in, for you watching these Sunday school lessons and getting getting the information that is shared at the end and applying it to your life. But I actually would like and share this video so somebody else can also get that information. They can also understand that even in the midst of what they're going through, if they had the heart and mind of Christ, they could be able to help somebody else even while they were dealing with their own issues themselves. And listen, we ask that you would like and share this video again that someone make it this valuable lesson. I want to thank God for my church, the Liberty Mission Baptist Church. I am so appreciative of God for calling you my church home. And you have no idea the role you play in my life. And listen, we'll talk to you later. God bless. Bye. <coughs> uh, uh.